Greetings, Python coders. It is I, Alan D. Moore, author of Python GUI Programming with TK Inter from Pact Publications, available wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. This is part five of our TK Inter Basics series, and in this video, we're going to be talking about dialogues. So, over here we have our code, and by the way, if you're sharp, you might notice that I'm using a different editor. I was just having some bizarre bugs with idle not respecting my key bindings. Um, so I'm just going to open up Emacs here and keep trucking. Uh, you go ahead and follow along though in whatever editor makes you feel warm and happy inside. Alright, so in our program here I have done a few changes off camera. I cleaned up some of the widget uh, references that we don't need made a few tweaks to the layout nothing new uh, just different and the biggest change is that I got rid of the hashlib based encryption we were doing for our private messages since it's kinda silly we can't really unencrypt them so I traded that out for a home rolled encryption called weak sauce encrypt and as the name implies it is very weak sauce don't ever use this in anything remotely important. This is kind of uh, Little Orphan Annie level decoder ring type encryption here. Um, it takes a password basically and um, just shifts all the letters in your text by the sum of the values of the password string. So it's super weak. Don't, don't ever use this for anything. But anyway, down here in our private message, in our save, uh, and we're using weak sauce encrypt on that with a hard-coded password of password because who needs a password other than password I mean millions of people around the world are fine with that password uh, we're also changing the extension of our encrypted files to secret um, and that will help us out when we try to open those files to know that they're encrypted uh, other than that, I also did add a trace on the private variable since that now affects the file name. We do need to trace that and do our file name check when we check the private box. Pretty simple stuff. Alright, well let's dig into some dialogues. Now, TKEnter has several dialogue libraries or sub-modules. It's a little confusing. I think some of them are actually just old cruft. But there are many useful ones, and we're going to talk about three of the useful ones today. We're going to talk about message box, we're going to talk about simple dialogue, and we're going to talk about file dialogue. So let's jump in. Okay, first library we're going to talk about is message box. Now, all of these submodules have to be explicitly imported. You cannot say tk.messagebox to access any of the stuff in message box. We have to add an extra import line to bring that in. So we're going to say from take a enter import message box and because that's a whole lot to type in this very narrow window with very large fonts I'm going to alias that to tkmb. Feel free not to do that if you don't like that. Okay so uh, place I thought we could use a message box here is in our save function. Uh, right now, if we scroll down here, uh, we just set the status bar to a little message that says the message was saved file name. That's not quite assertive enough for me, so we're going to add a message box. So with message box, there is a class that you can create instances of, but most of the time what you're going to do is use its convenience functions. So these are functions that will basically pop up a dialog on the screen and depending on which button the user clicks in the dialog it's going to return a particular value. So all these message box dialogs are just a message and buttons and all you get back from the user is what button they clicked. Uh, we're going to use one called show info. So here we go. We'll say tkmb, that's message box, uh, show info. And we'll go ahead and grab this guy, 
put it in there. All right, so show info, like all message boxes, takes basically two arguments, positional arguments. The first one is the title of the window. The second one is the message that goes in the box. And you can pass those as positional arguments or you can use keywords, title, and message, whatever style you prefer. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, so I'm going to say test one, two, three. In hobbies, market private, we'll say uh, had a great day doing hobbies and we will save and right here you see here is our dialog now it's missing a title that's just an artifact of my particular window manager I'm using if you're on any kind of normal desktop environment you're gonna see a bar up here that would have your title on it all right very good and I hit OK it goes away um, and just in case you're wondering, uh, let's look at that weak sauce encryption. If you can see that here in the text, we've got, I don't, I don't even know what that is, some kind of elvish? I don't know. Maybe you know what language that is, but pretty unreadable, even if we did know what language that was. Um, so our encryption's working. Very good. All right, so another thing you can do with message box is you can ask a question, and depending on what button the user pushes, you'll get back an answer. Um, you have probably seen dialog boxes like that before. Um, you know, OK or cancel, yes or no, retry, cancel, whatever. Um, message box has all those. And let's go ahead and use one I tell you what, let's let's go ahead and put one in its own function so that when we hit the private checkbox, we'll get a little warning. Okay, so let's create a function. We'll call it uh, private warn, and we'll we're going to use this as a trigger callback. So we're going to get the value of private. Let's see warn the user about the consequences of private private equals private var dot get and we'll say if private all right so if it's private we'll ask the user do you really want to make it private and if they say no we'll unmark it okay so here we go. So the, we're going to say response equals tkmb. That's message box. And the function we want to use is ask OK cancel. And just like the other message box, we have a title. We'll say, are you sure? And let's go ahead and bump this down to the next line. Are you sure? And do you really want to encrypt this message? So ask OK or cancel will give them an OK button or cancel button. If they say OK, it'll return true. And if they hit cancel, it'll return false. So we can use that and say if response private var dot set false alright and we'll go ahead and just put a trace here so on our private var dot trace add when it's written to so write we will run private warn okay let's try that out So I'm going to click private and I get this message box right down here. Do you really want to encrypt this message if I say OK? It's, oops, I think I did this backwards. OK, so if I cancel, <laughs> it stays private. So I should say if not response 
that would make more sense, wouldn't it? Let's try that out. So, are you really want to encrypt this message? Okay, it stays checked. If not, it goes unchecked. All right, very good. So that's message box, and there are several other functions you can use. Um, most of them are just variations on what buttons are presented and what you're going to get back if the user clicks one button versus another. It's very simple stuff. It's essentially you want to show a message and you want to find out what button the user clicked when they read the message. Okay, the next library we're going to talk about is Simple Dialog. A simple dialog is very similar to message box, but whereas message box could only get back button pushes, simple dialog is for asking a user to input a value. So just like message box, we won't be creating instances of objects, instead we'll be using convenience functions. It has three convenience functions. One is ask string, one is ask integer, and one is ask float, and they are for asking for string, integer, or float values respectively. For our program, we're going to try the ask string dialog, and we're going to put it up here in save. So, password maybe is not the best password ever. So, instead of hard coding that, we are going to ask. So, let's say password equals, hey, we need to import this library. So, back up to the top real quick. We'll say from TK enter, import simple dialogue, and we'll shorten that to TK SD. All right, back down to password here. So, TK SD dot ask string. And once again, just like message box, it takes two positional arguments, a title and a message. We'll say enter password for our title. Let's go ahead and move that down and enter a password to encrypt the message. Now, in all honesty, this is not great to use for passwords simply because it doesn't do any kind of masking, you know, with the little dots in the field instead of the letters. It's just going to be a plain text entry with no frills where you can enter a string. It's just a very simple, convenient way to get a string from a user when you don't want to build an entire form for this. All right, so then we will use that password. in our encryption. Let's give that a shot. We'll call this test 321. File it under work. Mark it private. Yes, I really want to encrypt it. Did secret stuff at work today. And we're going to save that. Ah, now I have a dialog here. You can see it wants me to enter a password. Uh, we will try super secret password. And hit OK. And that worked. It was saved. Uh, we'll go ahead and check that out in the terminal. Ooh. Not sure what that did to my terminal, but it didn't like it. It must be some pretty high Unicode characters. Oh, there we are. <laughs> All right. Nice. That is definitely not going to be readable. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. So be careful catting these out. They might run commands for you. 
All right, so that's pretty much all there is to simple dialog. Obviously, if you ask for an integer, it's going to cast that to an int after it's entered. And if you ask for a float, it's going to cast that to a float after they enter it. But otherwise, it just returns the value that's entered um, from the function. So the last module is file dialog. And just like the other two, we need to import this. So from TK enter, import file dialog, and we'll call that tkfd for short. And I thought what we could use this for is to allow us to open our messages that we've saved. So right above save here, we'll go ahead and define an open function. Actually, that's a Python built-in, so we should probably call this open file. Open a diary file. Okay, so unlike those other two dialog modules, file dialogs are a little more complicated to call. Not too much. We do still use convenience functions. And there are several, depending on whether you want to open a file or prompt to save for a file. And they come in two flavors. So there are functions that allow you to ask for a file name, and they'll return a file name. There's also an ask file version of the functions that will return a file handle. So it'll go ahead and take care of opening the file for you, and then you can just go ahead and write to it. Of course, you have to take care of closing it. So I tend to prefer to just ask for file names and handle opening and writing to the file myself. Just a personal preference. The function that we need to use here is called ask open file name. So we're going to get a file name back from that. Actually a full absolute path to a file. So we'll say file path equals tkfd and it's ask open file name. There's also an ask open file names if you want to allow multiple files, but we don't want to do that in this case. All right, so these, unlike the others, are configured with keyword arguments. So the first one will be a title. Select a file to open. Uh, we can specify an initial directory, but I just want to go ahead and use the default, which is the current working directory. Um, we can specify file types. So if you've looked in a file dialog, you know that there's usually a drop down list where you can select different types of files, like maybe text or different kinds of images or whatever file format your programs work with. And to specify that, we create a list with tuples. And each tuple is going to be a name and then a pattern. So I'm going to say star.secret. And then for the next tuple, it's going to be text and star.txt. There's a few other options. We can specify a default file type. We're just going to leave it minimal like that. And that's going to get our file path. All right, once we have the file path, let's create a path object for that. File path. So once we create a path object from our file path, we're going to get the file name. And that's going to be fp.stem. We're going to split the file name, category, and subject will equal file name dot split and it will split on the dash with spaces around it. So now we need to determine if we have an encrypted file or not, and we'll determine that by whether or not the extension is secret. So we say if fp dot suffix equals dot secret. That should be double equals. 
All right, so if it's secret, we need to prompt the user for a password. So let's go ahead and use our simple dialog again. Ask string, enter password. And then, tell you what, before we do that, let's go ahead and read the message. Message equals fp dot read text. If it's encrypted, we'll say message equals weak sauce decrypt message and password. And finally, let's go ahead and populate our variables so that our entries are populated. So we'll say cat var dot set category subject var dot set subject so to set our text widget we need to first delete everything out of it and then we need to insert our current message into it so we're going to say delete 1.0 tk dot end and what am I doing here message input okay we've deleted everything out of the text box now we just need to insert we're gonna start at 1.0 and just insert our message Okay, now we need to be able to run our open file. So let's go ahead and create another button up here. We'll do it right above the status bar. So we'll say open button. Tk.button. Root text equals open we'll grid that uh, we'll say sticky equals tk.e ipad x5 ipad y5 and down here after our open file we'll say open button dot configure and we'll set its command to open file okay let's give that a shot so first let's go ahead and save a new message so we'll say test four that will be health private yes I really want to uh, had a super great day today. Felt wonderful. We'll save that. We will use, let's use password. It's good enough for anybody. As our encrypted password, we saved. And let's close the program. We'll cat health test four. You can see it's got some very interesting letters there. And now let's see if we can decrypt it here. So we'll go to open. You can see our file dialog right here should look pretty familiar to you guys. You've seen these all the time when you open files. So we'll pick our file. We'll try password. And as you can see, oh, ah. You guys were probably screaming at the screen, weren't you? All right. There we go. Let's fix that. Should be insert, not delete. All right, so let's open our file. Test four. 
password's the password. And as you can see, there it is. So file dialog, like I said earlier, has several other functions you can use for asking to save a file or multiple files. Some of them return file handles. Some of them return file names. Use whichever one works for you. Not too complicated. That's all we have for today. Hope you found this enlightening. Next time we're going to tackle menus. Y'all have fun coding with TKEnter and take care. God bless.